in a recent course, someone asked how can they build a table, animate a table in PowerPoint row by row. They were specifically copying cells from Excel and it created a PowerPoint table, but that's the problem. See, the problem is, is that we can't do that. What I'm gonna show you in this video is how to copy cells from Excel to create a text box table in PowerPoint that can be built row by row. So let's, again, look at what's the problem. So the problem is a table in PowerPoint does not allow you animation by row. It's either on or off. So if I take a table of cells from Excel here, and just copy this table of cells, and if I just do the regular paste into PowerPoint, Control V paste into PowerPoint, you'll notice it comes in, make it bigger so you can see it, notice it comes in as a table. You see up here the table design and table layout ribbons. It's a table. It also doesn't keep any of the colors. Notice in Excel I had the, the red and green triangles indicating good or, or not so good performance, but I didn't keep any of that. It just brought it in as a table and my animation options, if I go to the animation ribbon and I say up here, I don't have any effect options. I can't build it row by row. So that's a problem. That's the problem. What's the solution? So the solution is to paste a formatted text box. And then we can use tabs to create the columns that look like columns, but they're actually part of a text box. So we're gonna start in Excel again, uh, just uh, copy our, our set of cells here. And then in PowerPoint, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the paste dialog here. And in paste, I'm gonna drop that down and I'm gonna say paste special. And then in the dialog box, what I'm gonna select is an item here called formatted text RTF. RTF is a uh, formatting for text that used to be used quite a while ago, but it's not as common now, but it's really, really useful when you want formatted text. And I'm gonna say, copy this into PowerPoint as a formatted text box. So I select that. When I click OK, I get the text box here in PowerPoint. And you'll notice it, it kind of lines stuff up, sort of. Well, what it's doing is, is every time it goes to a new column, it puts in a tab character. That's really helpful for us because we can set the tabs we want in a text box in PowerPoint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first set the tabs for my the body here, which is the department, the numbers, and so on. So I'm gonna select all of the text there. Now it's really important you select all of the text you want to adjust the tabs for because the tabs get adjusted only for the text that is selected. Now, why didn't I select the text as including the headers? Because often you're gonna want the headers aligned slightly differently to the numbers or the other columns. And this gives you that flexibility. So I've selected all of those and in the ruler up here, I'm going to set my tab stops. Now, if you go, Dave, I, I don't see the ruler. They didn't include it in my version of PowerPoint. No, they did, it's just not turned on. So you just make sure you go to the uh, view ribbon up here and you make sure that here the ruler is checked, it's selected. That's what you wanna make sure to show the ruler. So I've selected this text and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add tab stops into the ruler. Now, there are actually four different types of tab stops. So if I go to the left of the ruler, you'll see this little, it looks like a backwards L, and that's where you select the type of tab. The first is the left alignment, which is the default. How do you change them? Just click on that. And you'll notice the next one looks like an upside down T, that's center alignment. Click again. We have right alignment. This is all making sense now. And then we have decimal alignment. This is actually the one you want for most numbers because what it will do is it will line the numbers up at the decimal, regardless of how many numbers are before or after the decimal, it lines it up at the decimal. This makes it much better for comparing numbers in a column, especially if there are different lengths of numbers. This is better than right alignment because many fonts do not have monospace numbers. And so you end up with nines being wider than ones, and then things don't line up if you use right alignment. But with decimal alignment, that decimal always lines them up. So I'm going to go and I'm going to first select the decimal alignment because the first one I need to do is a number. So 
When we take a look here, our numbers are lined up there. And to add a tab stop, you simply go and you click into the bottom half of the ruler where you want the tab stop to be. So it looks to me like I want to move them a little further away from the department names. So it looks like maybe if I put it here, that will be. Okay, so you'll notice they immediately jumped over to that spot, lining up the end of them where the decimal would be. There's no decimal here, but that's where it would be. So it lines them up there. This is perfect. It automatically did it. Why? Because as I said before, the text box came in with tab characters already in it, which makes this so much easier. Now for the, uh, the triangles, I'm going to use a right tab stop because I want to put them to the right where I put them. So I'll keep clicking through till I get to the right tab stop. Okay. And that one, I want to put a little closer. Okay. So I'm going to put that, let's say right here and let's see. Oh, that looks good. Yep. And now for the percentages, I'll go back to my decimal tab stop and I'll put that, uh, let's say I want to line them up, let's say here. Now, I look at that and I go, oh, gee, you know what? Actually, the triangles, they're a little too close to the dollar amounts. I want to move them over. That's, that's okay. We can adjust them. So I've selected all the text. So you can adjust this afterwards again if you just select all the text. Now what I'll do is I'll say, oh, I want to move them over to the right of it. So I'll just go up and I'll drag that tab stop over to the right. And they moved over to the right. Now the, the percentages, they should be a little closer to the triangles. So I'll move their tab stop a little closer and perfect. That's exactly what I want it to look like. Now I have all of the numbers, the body of my table set. Now I also want to set the tab stops for the headings. So I line them up over the numbers that they represent. So I need to select again, all of the text in that heading. Notice I went over to the left-hand side to select everything. Now I can add my tab stop. So I'll use a center tab, selected that already. And for the expenses, let's say I'll put it, uh, let's say here, so that looks pretty good. And for the plan, the versus plan, I'll put it, let's say here. Oh, that, that's actually too close. So I can, how do I adjust it? Well, I've selected all the text. I can simply adjust this again, move it over. Oh, that's exactly where I want it to be. So now I've got my text all set up the way I want it to be. Maybe because I don't have lines between, maybe I want a little more space between each of the rows in the table text box. Well, I can do that. I can select the text box by selecting the outside border. And then what I can do is I can go to the home ribbon and I can select the spacing. So the line spacing options. Now I don't want the necessarily the one and a half or two. What I can do is, is I can say, I want to control how much space is after. So you notice down at the bottom here, it says spacing after that's how many, how much space should go after each paragraph. Now in a text box, it considers a paragraph just where you hit enter. So in this case, it's every row. So if I'm using, let's say 18 point text, maybe I'll add, um, say six points, each of the clicks on the spinners, that's what those little arrows are called, add six points. But you can just type in however much you want. Now when I click OK, what I notice is I've got that extra space in there. Looks exactly like I want it to do. Now the last step is just to simply animate it. So I can build it row by row. I'll go up to my animation ribbon. I'll say I want this to appear. And the default for a text box is to appear, appear all at once. The entire text box appears. But I can also go here to the effect options and drop that down. And I say, I want to do it by paragraph. Remembering a paragraph is every time I hit enter. So here it's every row. So I'll select that. And now you'll notice that it shows me one, two, three, four, five. So there are five builds. And if I go into reading view here, I don't have anything. My first click. I say here, we want to look at each of the departments, their expenses versus plan. I click department A. I have that discussion about department A. The rest of the departments aren't there, so we can focus our discussion just on this one department. Then the next build brings me the next department. We have that discussion and so on until I'm done all the departments. So that's how we can take Excel cells, put them into PowerPoint, 
as a text box table, format it so it looks like a table, and then we can build it row by row. This has a bonus when you're using this technique. The bonus is you can actually round trip a PowerPoint table using this. By this I mean you take the PowerPoint table out of PowerPoint, copy it, paste it into Excel, and then bring it back as a table text box. You can't do this directly in PowerPoint. It doesn't give you that option, but it does if you do it in Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'll just copy this table. I'll copy all the elements of the table, select all of those, copy. I'll go over to Excel and down here I will just say Control D paste and it pastes it in the way you would normally. Now I could adjust this, the text size here if I want, but I don't really need to do that because it'll come back. So I'll just copy it, come back here, and I will say again on my home ribbon, I use my paste special, my formatted text RTF, and it brings it in exactly like I wanted it. Now, here's the problem. You notice it brought it in as number signs. That's because the width of that cell was not wide enough in Excel. So just be careful about that. Format the text. So let me delete that so we can see. So here, if I'm going, oh, gee, you know what? It's actually not fitting properly there. I'll just uh, take those cells away from there, put them over here. Now I can make this cell wider so it shows what it's supposed to. Now when I copy it and paste special here, the formatted text, the numbers come back in the way they're supposed to uh, because it's, it does think about the display that it was displaying in Excel. So just a tip there to make sure that you've got it looking like you want it to be in Excel, the numbers are showing, because it doesn't know what the numbers are below those pound signs in Excel. So this technique of copying cells from Excel and then pasting them into PowerPoint using that RTF text format, then you can adjust the tabs to create your columns is a great way to be able to build a table row by row in PowerPoint where that table came from Excel, including all the formatting. So the colors, those triangles, they all came in from Excel. And now I can build this and discuss it row by row in PowerPoint. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.